Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and it's that time of the week where we get to take a look at the coolest knives that have hit our shelves in the last seven days. Let's check them out. All right, the first nice news, nice knife news this week. Uh, back in stock after a long time is the new CF Elite versions of the Benchmade Bugout, uh, both plain edge and partial serrated edge coming in at 144.50. Finally, these are on the shelf and ready to ship right now, uh, at least at the time we're filming this video they are. And the key difference between this and the standard versions of the bug out is the handle material. Rather than using Grivery, this is CF Elite, hence the name CF Elite. And that material is essentially a carbon fiber reinforced nylon. And what that gets you is uh, a material that's both more tough and stronger than the standard Grivery handles, as well as even more lightweight, which is really impressive. Um, it doesn't knock off a whole bunch off of the overall weight of the knife because it already was a featherweight design. Uh, 1.8 ounces on the standard, but this one is 1.7 if that matters to you. Um, more so than the weight though, it's got just a, a sturdier feel in the hand. It doesn't flex quite so much. I know some folks don't like that uh, with the standard versions of the bug out, but it's still got that same great shape. Despite the, uh, the shortness of the blade, it's only about three and a quarter inches long. You still get a nice full handle. You can fit, or I can fit all four fingers of my slightly larger than average hands on it quite well. And it's just a great EDC design. S30V blade steel, drop point, high flat grind. We've got a DLC blade coating on this particular one um, just for, uh, to keep things kind of blacked out. It doesn't need it, of course, for, uh, for any kind of corrosion resistance. S30V, of course, is nice and stainless. Mini deep carry pocket clip, and of course, Benchmade's axis lock, which makes it ambidextrous. You can flick it open and closed, no problem. It's just, it's a knife I love. Uh, I'm actually carrying uh, my bug out today, which is not the CF Elite, but it is our Knife Center exclusive red battle wash with the satin S30V blade. Great design. Next up is a new design from We Knife Company. This is the Moat, which is an Ostop Hell design, and these come in right now just under the $170 mark. Now this shape is a little bit of a departure from uh, a lot of the Ostop Hell designs we've seen so far, but it does maintain one of his kind of signature elements. Right here at the, uh, the back of the spine of the blade, we've got one single jimp that's a little, or I guess you could call it a jimp, uh, one little blade cut out there that's a little bit more, uh, a little bit deeper than the rest of the jimping you see here. We've seen that kind of just little feature on a bunch of his designs so far, but I think this is my favorite shape he's come out with so far. It's just such a great, organic flowing looking design in a really short package. This blade's only about 2.7, just under 2.7 inches long. Uh, so definitely a great size for carrying just about anywhere. Since you're under that three inch mark, you've got a titanium frame, stonewashed. This is the bronze version, but there's also a blue and a gray. And being a wee knife, of course, as you would expect, you've got ball bearings in the pivot with the flipper. So it flips open quite nicely. Now, as for the blade itself, as I said, really nice organic shape that flows quite nicely into the handle. You've got a continuous curve here on the edge, so it's gonna slice. Uh, just, I like the characteristics of, a, of that type of edge as your hand moves through uh, a piece of material, cardboard, whatever. Uh, S35 VN blade steel, so you got really good edge retention, nice flat grind, and really thin blade stock here. It's only about 0.1 of an inch thick, um, at least according to our specs, I'm looking, my, uh, my, eye, my eyeball calipers say it's a little bit thinner, but you know, looks can be deceiving sometimes because you do have that nice swedge along the outside. But with that, that type of high flat grind, the thin blade stock and that swedge, this is just gonna melt through whatever you're cutting very nicely. All right, now we've got something from Wii's uh, more budget-oriented sister brand, Civivi. It's a new version of the Rustic Gent, which has been a hugely popular knife. Uh, this one comes in about 76.50, or exactly 76.50, and you've got carbon fiber bolsters like all the rest, but you've got a, um, at first I thought it was burlap, but they're calling it a dark brown matrix micarta. Um, looks an awful lot like burlap, but there is there are some subtle differences there, it looks like, going on. Really cool look though. Um, gives it almost a look of, uh, of like a classic wood in a way. Uh, but not, you know, not exactly, but it does offer a really cool look. Um, like I said, hints of that burlap uh, type of look, um, but also kind of feels like uh, a piece of figured wood, uh, maybe like a flamed koa or something in a way. 
Um, but of course, being micarta, it's not gonna crack or swell like natural wood can. And of course, it's gonna feel a little bit grippier when it's wet as well. So it's a high performance material in addition, in addition to looking very good. Blade steel is D2, just under three inches long. Nice hollow grind on this, so it keeps things really, really thin right behind the edge. Uh, and that's one thing that Civivi and we both have always done uh, very consistently well, is maintaining a nice, very thin, in addition to being a very sharp edge. And of course, you've got the, uh, the lockback mechanism here that you can see near the back, right next to the hidden lanyard attachment point. And what I've kind of always said about the Rustic Gent design is it's a slip joint for the folks that want a lock. Um, if you like that slip joint styling, but you don't really want to carry a knife that doesn't have a lock, this has that kind of uh, those kind of lines of a classic slip joint. And even in addition to that, as I unlock it, it's even got a half stop like a lot of slip joints do. So you still get most of the experience uh, of owning and carrying a slip joint, but you get the extra satisfying or the extra safety provided by the locking mechanism. Also, like most classic slip joints, we don't have any kind of pocket clip here, but to make it easier to carry every day, they do give you a leather pocket slip that does come with a deep carry pocket clip. So that way you're able to uh, still carry it easily. It's gonna keep the blade or the knife itself protected from whatever's in your pocket and vice versa. It's gonna protect those things from the knife. And as you can see, it buries nice and deeply in there. So it's gonna carry very unobtrusively. If you wanna make it a little easier to get out, there is of course that lanyard point right there. You can add a nice little uh, decorative fob or bead or something like that to make it easier to pull. All right, now I've got a couple of, uh, of limited edition knives I wanna talk to you about. Uh, the first is a new version of the Buck 112 Ranger. Uh, and as you can see, I think there's a, a nice transition between this Civivi into this Buck, kind of a sim plays in a similar vein, uh, although they, they don't go for like the traditional slip joint vibe with the 112. It is, of course, the smaller version of the 110 Folding Hunter. Uh, but anyway, if, the, if I didn't mention the price yet, these are about 120, uh, just under 119.99, and they are limited to just a thousand pieces worldwide. Uh, so not super, super exclusive, but pretty exclusive when you consider the popularity of Buck as a brand across the world. Now they're taking their standard 112 Slim Pro, which is the, of course, slimmer, more EDC friendly version of the classic 112, and spicing it up a little bit. Still has the same S30V blade steel as that standard model, uh, coming in about three inches as well. Straight clip point here, as opposed to the more aggressive clip of the classic models with a nice hollow grind to keep things thin enough behind the edge. And of course your dual thumb studs to make it easier to open. Meanwhile, the handles are spiced up with marbled carbon fiber, which looks really cool as you move it around in the light. Uh, makes this kind of the gentleman's version of the classic 112 Slim. They've spiced up the pocket clip as well. Instead of the standard folded over version, we've got a version suspended here by a couple of posts that elevate that and give it a little bit more of a premium look. Uh, it is not gonna be reversible, however, unlike the standard 112 Slims, uh, this is only, uh, this is shaped to fit the one side only. But it's definitely the classiest and I think the coolest version of the 112 Slim so far. And like I said, limited this year. So make sure to get your hands on one if you like it. All right, now this next knife is even more limited. This one's out of 100. It's one of the new versions of the MKM Clap. Uh, this version, the limited version, coming in at $4.99. And that's just under 500 bucks. That's not $4.99. Um, of course, standard versions of this are, a bit, are quite a bit cheaper, under 200 bucks on most of those. Uh, I think we may even have one on sale right now for about 160. Uh, but that's, of course, you know, temporal information that's going to change depending on when you take a look at this video. Um, but the version here, limited, comes with a Dama steel blade. This is the Heimskringla pattern. Of course, I'm butchering that, I am sure carbon fiber handles, and a titanium bolster. If you're not familiar with this design, it's a Bob Terzola design. We've got compound grinds, both of them flat, but a little bit higher here near the belly, so you have a little bit more slicing capabilities right out there. And a nice crown spine here along the edge, since this is an MKM uh, made in fact by Lion Steel. So the, uh, you know, that's something Lion Steel does quite a bit, as well as a lot of the other Italian folks out there. Makes it nice to look at and very comfortable when you're choking up on it as well. Now the flipping action is quite good. Of course, ball bearings in the pivot. Nice flip there. And we've also got one of Lion Steel's other signature things. You've got a removable flipper tab right there. Um, and it's not just for gimmicky purposes. The reason they do that uh, is in certain European Union countries, 
Of course, uh, you can't have a one hand opening blade that also locks, you can have one or the other. Uh, so you can buy this, take that flipper tab off and be in compliance over there. And one of the nice things that this MKM also comes with is of course their limited edition boxes, which um, I, it may not sound like a feature, but so far all their limited knives have featured the same box style, which is magnetic and I'll pull it open here. Comes in two pieces and you can set it up in a few different ways. You can of course set it up in a uh, kind of a peaked fashion like so, but what you're probably gonna wanna do is set the box up like this. You've got your certificate of authenticity down here with serial number. Uh, and in addition, that serial number matches the lid of the box and of course, the knife itself. Now you can put this in there closed, but it'll also hold the knife open thanks to the magnets in there. And because all of these are the same, it's gonna make, if you own any of the other ones or wanna start collecting any of these MKM limited editions, they're gonna make a great display on the shelf. They're all going to look fantastic together. Or of course, if you want to carry one of these knives instead of just collecting it in this configuration makes a nice little valet tray next to your bedside table too. You can put your keys or phone or whatever in there, but probably close the blade up if you're storing it, storing it there overnight. All right, this next knife is not limited, but it is quite fancy. And that is a new Santa Fe Stoneworks version of the Spyderco Dragonfly, highly customized coming in at about 280. Now, of course, you've got the standard uh, Spyderco design language. Uh, these are based on the stainless steel handled versions of that knife. And then they put a really cool uh, onlay here on the front, do some cool shaping. Uh, these are gold mother of pearl. And you can see there's a few different tones there. Looks fantastic in the light. And additionally, a great gentleman's knife, uh, or I think a great knife uh, for the ladies out there. Makes, looks almost jewelry like. Uh, in its execution. So I think it's something that pretty much anyone out there can appreciate. I certainly really like the way it looks. Beyond that, it's still a dragonfly, so it still performs quite nicely. Because you got the finger choil there right around the pivot of the knife, you can get just about all four fingers on there. And it gives you a good amount of control over that shorter blade uh, coming in about two and a half inches or thereabouts. VG10 stainless steel, high flat grind, nice thin blade stock. This is another, like that moat from before, a very highly efficient cutting slicing knife. Then of course the handle, stainless steel. So you got a little bit more weight on here, but it does make it feel nice and substantial. Mid mounted back lock. And because they've done some customized, uh, the customization there on the front side, this is only a single position pocket clip with this version, right side tip up only. All right, back to a limited edition knife. We've got some new versions of the RMJ Reaver coming in at about 300 bucks right now. This is just one of the two uh, limited versions that are out right now. Now, of course, what we have here is a push dagger. We've got 80 CRV carbon steel with a double edge, about four inches of length. And of course, you've got that kind of wasp waisted type of shape, uh, essentially double recurves coming to that very sharp point. Now, there is some cool texturing here along the center. It's not perfectly flat and it kind of mimics uh, some of the, uh, the RMJ hand forged stuff that they do. Uh, this one, however, is not. And then moving back to the handle here, we've got an OD and black layered G10. They're calling it uh, Dirty Olive G10, in fact. And nice narrow uh, tang or nice narrow part of the tang here, which means it's designed to fit between your fingers, of course. And this nice broad handle really does provide a lot of grip. It feels super secure, um, not like any kind of thin handle there. Uh, just It's just very confidence inspiring. And as soon as you pull it out, it actually kind of reminds us of a, uh, a charging handle on an AR-15. Um, just kind of has that familiar feel just as soon as you pick it up, which is quite nice. Then we come to the sheath. It is Kydex and you've got two uh, straps here along the side that are designed to let you carry it horizontally with a pull the dot snap on there. So it's not going to come loose unless you pull it in just the right, uh, just the right orientation. If you'd rather not use the, uh, the straps like this, these holes, uh, at least the two main ones here are compatible with a large tech lock. So you've got some extra options there if you need it. All right, while we're talking about sort of uh, defensive applications or defensive knives, I should say, we've got a new product here from Jake Hoback. Hoback, sorry. <laughs> this is a new custom dashi coming in at 155. And the knife itself is just a uh, kind of a simple kiradashi. You've got 20 CV stainless steel, however, so your edge retention is going to be quite high. And it's thick enough too that you're going to have a really good amount of durability there. And that stonewashed finish is going to wear scratches nicely as you go around using the knife. 
However, you might not be um, using this as much as you think day to day, simply because the sheath system they provide is not really intended to be um, easy to get in, get the knife in and out. Uh, it's designed for unobtrusiveness and fast access when you do need it. And that's because it's essentially a Velcro pinch pouch is what they're calling it. As you can see here, it's just two layers of Velcro. Um, so when you go to stick the knife back in, it really is easier to actually open it up rather than trying to insert it. But the reason they made it like this is because you can take this anywhere and stick it to another Velcro panel, whether it's on your gear, in a bag, what have you, maybe inside of a vest, and then you can simply grab the knife and you're ready to go. So that's the purpose there. Um, if you want to carry it every day, uh, maybe get a custom sheath made too. Um, or if you want to carry it every day as a utility knife, a, a custom sheath might help you out in that regard. Or you could just live with, uh, with what you got right there. All right, next up we've got a new multi-tool from SOG. Um, and admittedly, I'm guilty of this too. Um, I think a lot of their multi-tools tend to get overlooked a little bit uh, in favor of the Leatherman and the Swiss Army products out there. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm guilty of that too. Uh, but this is a new stonewashed version of their Power Access 21 coming in at about 90 bucks. And there's some cool stuff going on here. Of course, the signature element of pretty much every one of SOG's multi-tools is the compound leverage in the pivot. As you can see, we've got the gears going on there so that it really is gonna multiply uh, the force of your squeeze as you go to grip something. You get that compound leverage, exactly how it sounds. But of course, you got your nice needle nose as well as standard plier section here with the wire cutters there. Uh, but the reason these are called power access is because the, uh, the main uh, tools on the outside, which are, do all have thumb studs, are actually assisted opening which is pretty cool. Um, it, it is kind of grabbing some of the extra tools when I, uh, when I go with that, so just keep that in mind. But you've got a, uh, a nice strap cutter, serrated blade, standard knife blade, as well as, well, what's here on the other side? Let me check. As well as a nice wood saw there. Uh, those all have thumb studs, those all lock. Actually, all the tools on the outside lock with a, uh, a nice back spring type of thing here, very similar to, uh, to Leatherman's Wave series. But I think the other area where this, um, this knife or this uh, multi-tool sets it apart, uh, apart from uh, that compound leverage is the way they go about handling uh, screw driving bits. Um, there, there are some screwdrivers, including a Phillips uh, built into the main set of tools, but right here at the top, you can see there is a, uh, a standard quarter inch bit driver socket right there. And included with the multi-tool is not only this nice uh, nylon sheath, but also a pretty substantial bit kit, as you can see. So you can take any one of those out and they're gonna fit right in the top there. Of course, you got a real substantial handle for twisting that. But in addition to that, there's another little trick. I'm gonna pop this tool out right here. Uh, and this actually has two locking positions. It'll lock, uh, it'll lock in the fully open position, of course, as well as it'll, it'll lock from closing in the, uh, the halfway position. You can open it, however. And that is designed to fit the small socket adapter that comes with the bit kit. So then you can throw any of the bits in there as well. And if you're in the fully open position, that'll give you a little bit more reach than the standard version here at the top or at the halfway open, you'll be able to exert more leverage on what, whatever you're twisting, kind of magnify your force if something's really stubborn and really needs to get out. Pretty cool execution. All right, next up, we've got something new from K-Bar. It's not a knife, however. Uh, we've got a new kind of novelty item here from them. They're calling it the Dessert Destroyer. Um, it's ice cream scoop <laughs> coming in about 15 bucks and as gimmicky as this sounds I actually really like it. It's it's just fun It's made in America and out of a uh, creamid material and it has that same uh, vibe as your uh, your classic K-Bar Mark II fighter You've even got a bit of an oval cross section to the handle just like those knives So, you know, it indexes nicely in the hand and then you've even got pinch grips there uh, <laughs> So, you know, so you have finer control over the tip and you don't have a full cross guard, but you've got a small cross guard, which actually does something pretty cool. I think you can set it on the countertop without the bowl actually making contact with the surface. So it's actually nicely thought out for just an ice cream scoop. I'm actually pretty impressed uh, by that. 
As for the scoop itself, it's just kind of a standard shape, but you do have a bit of a, uh, not a sharpened point, but a bit of a pointed end there to make it easier to uh, get into some uh, really hard ice cream or some stubborn things. Um, you can probably use this for things like melon if you want to make some really big melon balls or some other desserts like that. Uh, no sheath with it, but you know, that was a joke. Um, anyway, <laughs> it's, just, it's just a lot of fun. Dessert Destroyer from K-Bar for 15 bucks. All right, next I've got a new design or a uh, new release here from Boker. Two, actually, I'm gonna show you this one first. Uh, two variants of their Gemini coming in at 101, just over 101 right now. We've got three and a half inch blade and 695 stainless steel. And the handles are an ebony wood, uh, but they're not a super black ebony, which is kind of surprising. This is a Guayacan ebony. I'm saying that wrong. I'm positive about that. Uh, but it's a pretty cool shape. There's a lot of milling going on. Uh, on those wood handles, so you've got a lot of grip. Uh, kind of like a checkering in a way, but instead of checkering, they're just a bunch of uh, series of grooves. But it does hold in the hand quite nicely, which is kind of to be expected uh, since the Gemini line uh, from them has always been sort of a tactical inspired line. You want to have a good amount of grip on, on a knife like that. Now you've got this version right here, which has a liner lock as well as dual thumb studs to make it easy to open one-handed. But like I was talking about with that MKM earlier, Boker, of course, is a German company, even though these two knives are uh, made in their Argentinian plant. And there are those places where you can't have the locking and the one hand opening together, which is why you also have this version, which they call the Gemini 42. And the 42, of course, uh, someone in our comments section was very kind to point out to us that that comes from the, the, uh, the law that's on the books, it has that number that makes that kind of stipulation that you need to follow. So that's why they're putting 42 in the name of the knife uh, for those folks out there that need to be compliant. But if you just want a simple liner lock, but you don't care about the one hand opening, you want maybe more of a classic look, uh, you know, this kind of kind of think of this sort of, not really, but stick with me a little bit, sort of as a, a liner locking version of a classic knife like the Buck 110 maybe. Um, those don't have thumb studs, those have a lock. But if you look at it from that angle, it could perhaps be more appealing for some of us out there that don't have to deal with that law in the books. All right, folks, that's all I've got time to show you this week. Make sure to let me know what your favorites were down in the comments. If you want to get your hands on any of these cool knives, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. And make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're there, because you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next purchase if you're going to buy one of these cool knives anyway. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. See you guys next time.